Hey, this is Mike at Home Point. Uh, in this session, we're going to go through modifying crystal uh, forms, rather, in viewpoint spectrum, or for viewpoint spectrum. We're following along the PowerPoint that I did in a presentation I did at the Dimensions 2024 conference. And the reason for this is so that you can, you know, when you get back from the conference, you can follow this and actually follow along step by step and, and do what we had described in, in the session. So I hope this is, is helpful. Uh, let's get rid of the PowerPoint. And quick note, I'm going to be following along in the PowerPoint. So I'll be flipping back and forth so that this follows the same structure that the presentation did. Um, the quick table of contents, we'll talk about what, when, why on Crystal. What is it? We'll do basic navigation. We're going to modify a customer invoice in Spectrum, a, a Spectrum customer invoice. Then we're going to attach that modified version to the Spectrum software and then talk a little bit about resources for you to, uh, to move forward. Um, so what is Crystal? Crystal's a report designer. Um, think of your Spectrum system as having a front end and a back end. The front end is where you go to do stuff. It's your user interface, like entering an AP invoice. When you, when you enter that invoice, you're actually entering it to, to the back end, to the database. Put stuff in the front end, it writes to the back end. That back end is what we're interested in this thing. The data that's in that back end, um, we're going to report on it. All right. Um, when do you use Crystal? Well, traditionally, Crystal was used when you wanted uh, professional looking forms or reports. Uh, it hit the market really early with, uh, well, with, with, with Windows based software in the late 80s, early 90s. It, it really uh, took the market and it's been used as a standard for many, many pieces of software, Spectrum included. Um, why do you use it? Well, because you have to, if you want to modify an existing Crystal reporter form, because again, uh, Viewpoint Spectrum uses Crystal as a standard for the baked in reports and forms. So if you want to modify them, you've got to use Crystal. You, you get it from SAP software. You can go to SAP's website and order Crystal and virtually any version works. I actually use a version from the, from the mid 90s still. It works just fine. So uh, versioning, you can, you can use most anything. All right, I'm following along on our, on our PowerPoint. We're gonna do basic navigation. Um, oops, it's important to know when you modify something, what you're starting with. So really briefly, What's been done to get to the point that we're, we're starting or working in the software? Well, number one, when the, when the designer designed the first AR customer invoice, for instance, the designer said, hey, Crystal Report, here's how you connect to the data. There's a special way to do that. Tables were added and linked so they knew how to relate to one another. Um, there, we've got a video on that. We've got a few videos on our, on our website about linking. That's a really important concept if, if you're doing one from scratch. Um, we sorted, we grouped rather, and then sorted and filtered data on a report. That's a, that's part of Crystal's secret sauce, is grouping and doing things with those groups. And we'll talk more about that today. Formulas were added. We did refinement. For instance, maybe we had to conditionally suppress the page number on page one because we didn't want to print that on page one. You know, so you you suppress it conditionally. Hey, if you're page one, don't print the page number. Conditional suppression. Um, oops, we, we then compared the output to a standard existing report. Burn that into memory. That's very important to keep out of trouble, is compare your output to a standard form or report and see that you're getting consistency. Um, then we did formatting, fonts, placement of the fields, making sure everything's right where we want it. And then we saved it and set it up for users to, to use. So that's what was done to get to the point where we're going to be working today. Um, so our first step then when we're working is we're going to take the design file that's used when you print a customer invoice and we're going to download it so that we can modify it. All right. So I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to pop over to, to Spectrum. Let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see a little, a little more. Um, I'm in. I'm in Spectrum. I'm, on the, I'm in the OnPoint tenant. Um, OnPoint texture Cheney. I'm, I'm in AR data entry. I'm going to customer invoices, <clears throat> and 
And I'm gonna pop up, well, first of all, I'm gonna to go to form because I'm, I'm printing the form. This is what accesses the crystal report design file. Now I'm gonna go up to the standard template because I want this before I made any changes. And I just happen to know it's invoice 1000 that I wanna work with. So I will preview him so I can build some data that's saved with the crystal report design file. And I'm, I'm getting what I expect here. Here's, here's invoice 1000 in, in my system. I'm gonna close that and then I'm gonna hit export. We all come to know and love export. And I'm gonna say export the crystal report, the RPT file. That's that's the that's the um the baked in crystal report design files end with .rpt, that's the extension. And I'll say, hey, export this puppy out. And I'm gonna say, okay. And he's, he's out there. So I'm gonna go out to my downloads folder. And I actually had one when I was testing for this presentation, I'm gonna get rid of him so there's no confusion. And so I've only got one out there. All right, let's go open him up and take a look. So I'm going to open up Crystal Reports. And I'm going to say, I could go File Open, or I could go up here to the toolbar and hit the Open icon. And I'm defaulting to my Downloads folder. So I'm going to grab that file I downloaded. And then I get a message, hey, some of the links couldn't be connected. I'm saying that's fine. I'm not inside the software. It can't, it can't find the links. And now I've popped open Crystal Reports. So what is, what is this thing? Well, when I popped open Crystal, I've got a few tabs here. I've got the report design tabs. If, if I had multiple designs I was working on, I'd see those listed across here. And then as we're working today, we're going to be flipping on this specific report. We're going to be flipping between the design tab and the preview tab. Very, very, very important. The design tab is where we do a lot of our work. And then the preview tab is, is just that. Okay. If, if you don't see the field explorer over on the right hand side, go to go to view and click on field explorer to pop that open so that you're looking looking like this all right important important concepts or components of the design file you know how's this thing laid out um, you can see you know we've got the design pad here where we're adding fields to our form or to our report and then over on the left, we've got sections. And so another one of Crystal's uh, secret sauce areas are these sections. You, you can see that as I go down, I've got report headers, page header, A, B, C, details, A, B, group footers, so on and so on. The purpose of these is to put objects into these sections to print once per page header A, once per page header B, once per detail, once per the invoice number. See what when I hovered over the section, it gives me a little tooltip that tells me what that well what that footer is, and that's a that's a formula. It starts with a little ampersand uh, value or key, and it's the invoice. So this is printing once per invoice. All right. What are what are some of the reasons we might bust up like page header A, B, and C? Why not just make it page header? You know. Well, an example might be an area we're going to, well, one an example might be this example might be this continued from previous page. Think about that. We don't want that to print on page one, do we? So if I right click on page header C, I get the section expert. This is another one of Crystal's uh, secret sauce claim to fame areas is there are controls around page header C. You can see on the left, I can flip between my sections. And on the right, I've got common controls, controls around paging, and controls around color for that section. All right. Um, so on common controls, I can suppress, I can suppress page header C entirely. So you'll see if I if I click suppress, it's gonna continually 
constantly suppress the printing of page header C. Why, why might you want to do that? Um, maybe there's a formula in here that calculates once per page header C. I don't want to display the formula. I just want to accumulate the values and use that value later. So I might suppress it in that case. In this case, it's a conditional suppression. This little formula dialog guy is red. That's telling us it's conditional because there's a formula in here. Enter formulas. I know I'm going fast and I'm throwing a lot out. Um, the contents of a formula uh, or the, the layout of your formula dialog. On the left, we have all the fields and objects that are available on the report. We're going over the formula layout here. Uh, we've got report fields and other database fields that are available for the formula. We've got we've got functions which are pre-built pre-built things that we can use. Um, I'm trying to find an example. Maybe we want the current date and time. Um, you know, we might put that on a report. When was it printed? That's an example of, of a function. It's it's a pre-built thing we want to use. And then there's operators, which are the things we do to fields. Maybe we want to add two fields together or sum two fields together. Um, we would use operators for that. Then the design pad of the formula is where you do your work. You can see I've got two forward slashes here and this first row is green. That's, that's a, a comment field or a remark. So whomever did this was very good at documentation. Suppress continuation message if first page. So the syntax is, hey, if the page number is one, well, what's page number? Well, he's a function, remember? Uh, if the page number is one, then true, meaning suppress. Otherwise false, meaning don't suppress. Okay, so that's one way you could do this. There are others, but that's one way that syntax can go. So we talked about the layout of the design in sections. We, we talked about why you might have separate sections. And then we looked at page header B. We, whoops, page header C. We went to, sec, right clicked, went to section expert. Come back to me here. Right clicked, went to section expert and looked at the, for page header C, we looked at the conditional suppression formula around C. Now, why couldn't we have done a conditional suppression on the object in C? Well, we certainly could have. We could have conditionally suppressed this text box. However, if we did that, we would still end up with the blank space there. And that's why it was done on, this, on the entire section and not on the box, text box. Um, I'm going to hop back over to the PowerPoint and make sure that we're covering everything that we did in this session. We downloaded the file, we looked at the design, went over A, went over A, B, and C. On the page header, we looked at the formula. Okay, really important concept. Um, again, I'm following along the PowerPoint we did. Very important important concept. Um, a lot of times it's easier to look at something you want to do on the preview and then highlight it and then go back to the design and it's already highlighted or focused and you do your work. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what you want to work with on the design and it's just not as intuitive as it could be. So we go to the preview and we grab it here, meaning we just highlight it to work on it on the design. Really important concept. All right, back to the PowerPoint. I just want to make sure I'm doing y'all doing y'all justice here. So modifying the customer invoice now. So now we're on section three. Um, we're going to make changes. We're going to suppress the company name. And the reason we're going to do that is the company name's already in the logo. We don't want to be redundant. Um, we're going to move the logo to the right of the form and we're going to add some text to the form. All right. So suppress the company name. I've already talked about this, about highlighting what you're working on in the preview. 
and then clicking on the design to work on it. So we covered, we covered that part. <clears throat> and then we're going to go over and actually do the work. So back to crystal. So kind of level set. We want to suppress on point construction is what we want to do. We don't want that to print. So we're going to highlight. We're going to go to design. We can see that this field is a formula. The at rep represents a formula. <clears throat> so over here on the field explorer, I'm going to expand on formula fields. And here's my company name and address. This is the formula that was put here to print the company name and address information. So I'm going to highlight him and double click. And I come to the formula dialog box that we all, we've all come to know and love. And again, I, I'm really liking the way that these uh, formulas were done. We can see the syntax here is very nice. We've got breaks. We've got page returns between natural logical sections of, the, of this formula. We say, all right, print the company name. Plus, if the address one is not blank, then do a carriage return and print the address. If it is blank, blank do the same thing with address two. And then it goes down to, to do similar with city state address three and then company phone. Address three is city state zip, okay? Um, so the logic and the way it's done is very nice. It's And I'm gonna show you on the PowerPoint. If you don't do this, it's just a long string of syntax and it's so hard to troubleshoot or it's virtually impossible to troubleshoot or to uh, uh, make any modifications to. So in, in the on-point group of report writers, we have standards on, on doing comment, doing remarks to document and also doing your formula so that others can follow your work. I guess that puts it all together in a nutshell, doesn't it? All right. So what I want to do is I want to modify the company name. There, there's a formula that's embedded inside of another formula. And that's what I want to modify. Well, actually, I don't have to modify that. I can modify it on this one. I'm just going to simply remark out that, for, that company name. We can see it all turns green. I was going to make it hard. <clears throat> now I'm just saying, don't even give me the company name. Just start with address one. And that's exactly what I want. And let's be good documenters. Remark out because company name is on logo. That could be helpful. Maybe in two years, in 10 years, somebody, maybe the logo changed and somebody says, why did they remark that out? Well, there's your answer. I'm going to save and close. And now I'm going to go back to my preview. And that's exactly what we wanted to do. We got rid of that company name. Mission one accomplished. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to move this logo over to the right. Now, <laughs> if I try to do that from the design, you see that little guy right here, that little plus key? I don't know if you can even see that. That's the logo, okay? It is virtually impossible to grab him and do anything with him. So we're going to do it over here. Um, notice just, just for fun, uh, bu, 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 bu. if I go to format, we've got conditional suppression here, tips and tricks. This little guy is going, Hey, if I'm finding you as part of an entity, if you've got entities turned on, grab it from the entity. If, if I don't have entities turned on and there's not a logo there, grab it from the company logo in company settings, all right? And what that does is it addresses the fact we could have our logo in one of two different places, okay? Either on the entity or on the company broad stroke settings, okay? Anyway, enough of that. We'll get rid of him. And what I wanted to show you was that it's with this logo, you see how it's highlighted here? It's much easier to deal with him. I just, if I go from the preview and I hold down my left mouse and I start dragging him. Oh, I got really lucky. Okay. I, I think that's fine the way he is. All right. So I basically just drag and drop, drug and dropped. Is that the right? 
<clears throat> my logo using the, the preview and I'm, I'm happy with him so far. Last but not least, we're going to put some remit to information down here. We're going to add some text. Let's pop back over to the PowerPoint. Here's the formula we looked at. We talked about the sections. Um, oh, in, in the class, in the presentation, I, I removed the formatting, the carriage returns, just to show you, if you just started typing out your formula, this is what it's going to look like. It's not usable. It's very difficult to troubleshoot. And that's why we, we do the page breaks and the remarks that we do. But anyway, we, yeah, I followed my instructions. We suppressed the company name, blah, blah, blah. And we moved the logo. I'm actually following along, following along pretty good. And then we do, we're going to add payment information. Okay. So we're going to add payment information next to the current do amount, all right? And we're gonna, number one, we're gonna go down to group footer one. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna verify any suppression on this on this section actually. And I'll explain that here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going, we're, we're gonna put our text here on group footer one. And I don't have to, but if I, I tend to work from the design pad here. I just want to make sure if I right click on 1F, which is where that current due is, and if I go to section expert, I want to make sure there's no suppression. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm putting some text in here. I, I want to know if it's going to be suppressed. Well, that, that makes sense. And, and there is none. Okay. So that's good. Then I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to hover down over the lower part of that section until I get an up and down arrow. And I'm going to hold down and just drag to open that up. And then I'm going to insert a text object. Now, the navigation here is just drag your mouse down. It's become a little crosshairs. Hold down your left mouse button and just open that up. And there's your text box. All right, to the left of current due. And I'm going to say send payments to colon carriage return on point consulting 310 Equestrian Road, Ozark Mo. 65721. And there we go. I've added my text box. Okay. Now I'm going to go back over to the preview. And there he is. Um, one thing that I had done in the class is this box wasn't big enough when I created it. I kind of had done something like this in the presentation. And when I when I went this, I real when I went to the preview, I realized that oh, I don't have enough room. So I said simply, when you get into those situations, all you have to do is enlarge that section and enlarge the text box, and we've got what we need. Okay, here on preview. So not too bad. We've we've killed the company name on on, on the address. We've moved the logo and we've added some text to a report form. These are these are three of the most common requests that we get in consulting. So I want to make this available to you so that if you have Crystal and uh, this suits you, you can you can do these things yourself. Um, let's pop back over to the PowerPoint. And next is setting up in Spectrum. I know I'm popping around here. Again, I just want to make sure I'm doing you service and following the, 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 the presentation in the conference. So to set up in Spectrum, the first thing I'm going to do is a save as, file save as. And I'm going to say it's the mail format. And this is my, my naming convention. I just tend, tend to say this is version 2. All right. And then that way, <clears throat> if I'm making subsequent changes, I can follow my work, you know. So then I'm going to pop back over to the Spectrum software. I'm still in my AR 
invoice form. I'm still in the customer invoice. And to attach this file, I'm going to go to my reports. I'm going to say setup and then new. I'm adding a new custom report and I'm going to say dimensions 2024 um, video. And I'm going to upload that file that I saved. And there he is, version two. I'm going to upload. Okay, I'm not going to worry about security here. Otherwise, if I wanted functional security, I would I would click that box. I'm going to hit OK and OK. And now if I print my Dimensions 2024 video format, and I can see that here he is because I clicked it under my, my reports. Do a quick test. And there's no company name. My logo is on the right. And I'm telling people where to send payment to. Okay, my text box is printing. So I'm thinking life is pretty good now. Um, if you want this to print by default, so you don't always have to go to my reports and find it, you can click on save current and I can say my uh, DIM 2024 video version. And that's just, I'm, I'm just making something up so I can follow my work. And then I say, always use it as my default. Okay. And I can also provide it to other operators and make it their default as well if I, if I choose to. So that that way, now when I go to the AR invoice form, I'm always, you know, landing on this particular version so that I don't have to go find it again. Okay. Back to Mr. PowerPoint. Okay. We've done all of this stuff. We set it up in Spectrum. That's all been done. And we, we, we used the uh, save current. So resources. Um, when I went to consulting school, when I first went into consulting in the early 90s and I went to consulting school, one of the first things that was said just burned in is use your resources. And that was some of the best advice I'd ever gotten. Use your resources. And I'm saying that to you. Um, well, what are your resources for Crystal Reports? Well, there, there are Crystal Report courses in Viewpoint Academy. You might check those out. And there, there are courses there. Um, OnPoint has, has courses and maybe other partners do as well. Okay. Um, Use your consultants. Oh, we've got over five. We've got six, six now, six Crystal Report designers, uh, as well as custom developers and stuff. Use us. We're happy. We're happy to help. We want you to be successful. And um, check out. You know, we've got on our website and on YouTube. We've got so many videos on Crystal over the years, um, and other partners may as well. Check. check just look for those. That's those self help tools. Um, and far, as far as moving forward, uh, some tics, tips and tricks. Um, there's a video we've got out on dealing with the small user interface on new um, new monitors. Uh, Crystal Reports is really small, so we've got a video on how to deal with that to make Crystal bigger so you can use it. You want to look for that. Um, we've also got an online beginning Crystal course we've published. Again, we just we want you to have resources to be successful. We actually do beginning, intermediate, and, and advanced Crystal Reports courses online, if you wish. We, heck, we've gone on site to do those over the years where there's enough attendees. So I want to let you know that's there. Other partners may as well, uh, as, as well as Viewpoint. So check those out. And then this video, of course, uh, is a resource for you. I know it's been kind of long. I wanted to give you everything you need to follow the the beginning tutorial we did or presentation in the class. I, I hope you find this useful. Um, please, if you have any questions about Crystal, about SQL queries, about Excel queries, about, about Viewpoint Spectrum, about the software itself, please call us. We've got many consultants. We're here to help and um, look forward to talking to you. Have a great day.